Greetings and welcome to Holy Angels Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois, USA, where Father Andrew Charles Smith Jr., also known as Father Brute, is pastor, with Deacon Bruce McElrath, Deacon Mervyn O. Johnson, Mr. Tyrone Pittman, Minister of Music, and Executive Director of Music of the Chicago Black Catholic Choir. We, the parishioners of Holy Angels Catholic Church, welcome you in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Videographer and photographer Gregory Evans Calloway. Rex Desir, lead web designer and developer. <laughs> Morning, church. Before we begin, we ask you to please put your cell phones on vibrators at this time. We ask it, also, we ask that you not text during Mass. Please stand. Our gathering song is Sign Me Up, found in the Leafy Guide in heaven on the one And the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. 
Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins.
while we extend our hands and put a blessing over our children. May Almighty God bless you as you go forth to learn the good news that God has prepared for you. May you walk in the light knowing that no harm can ever come to you. And we bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
my brothers, may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two <coughs> made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant, and gathered where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there be wailing and grinding of teeth. And my sisters and brothers, this is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Her value is far beyond pearls. 
Charm is deceptive and beauty free. But the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Fear of the Lord in the Bible means a proper religious attitude towards God. Not fear of one who is frightened or paralyzed by fear. But one who lives in the utter mystery and majesty and power of God. Psalm 128 says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. The second reading from 1 Thessalonians urges us to be ready for judgment. Know you are children of the light, so don't walk in darkness. Don't sleepwalk through life. Don't miss out on the chance to act with conviction and faith. Apostle Paul reminds believers that we do not know when Christ will come again. It can happen like a thief in the night or as quick as later pains. So we must walk in the ways of the Lord. One way of being ready for judgment is to use the talents that God has given us as Jesus taught in today's gospel. But let's set the context. The parable comes in the section of Matthew's gospel where Jesus is given an answer to the disciples' question about his second coming in Matthew 24, 3. Lord, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of her coming and of the end of the age? Jesus wants them to be on guard so that no one will deceive them. And helps them to understand that once he leaves, he will come again. He challenges us in the gospel in Matthew 24, 44. To be ready because the Son of Man will be coming at an hour when we least expect it. That's why we need to walk by faith and not by sight. It's interesting to note in the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, there are three parables told in a row. The parable of the bridesmaid, the parable of the talents, and the parable of the sheep and the goat. Essentially the same phrase is used in each. After a long time, the bridegroom comes after a long time. The landowner returns after a long time. The judgment comes after a long time. I believe this is Matthew's way of saying, though the master may be delayed, be diligent, keep your eyes on the prize, because he is returning and he is coming soon. But in the meantime and in between time, what are you doing with your gifts? How are you using your talents? Are you doing everything capable with your gifts that God has given you? Today's gospel, Jesus told a story about a wealthy man preparing for a long journey. He called his three servants and divided his money between them, each according to their ability. To one servant he gave five talents, to a second two, and to a third one. He leaves town. He entrusts each one with abundance according to one's ability. When the land will return, he called together his three servants and he asked them to give an account. Well, the five talent man had invested his talent and was able to return an additional five talents, a 100% return. So too, the two talent man doubled his money. Well done, good and faithful servant. What about the one talent man? He stepped forward and said, Sir, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow. 
See, he's using God's harshness for not being faithful to what God has given him. The one talent man needs to find an excuse for not being faithful. He needs to come up with an excuse for not using his talent. And what does he do? He tries to blame God. He returned what had originally been given to him. And of course, his master was angry. See, the master calls a spade a spade. He calls the servant lazy, simply lazy, and therefore wicked, sinful, and slothful. Why didn't the one talent man invest his God-given resources? Because he was lazy and fearful. But it didn't work. God saw through his blame man. And when he took the talent back and gave it to the servant who had ten. You might ask why one servant was given five talents, another two, and another one according to his ability. Why is life like that? We are all equal in the eyes of God. We are all guaranteed equal rights under the Constitution. And in the election, all of our votes are equal. But when it comes to our abilities, we are as different as night and day. We are as different as different can be. God simply did not make us all the same. Thank you, Jesus. But that's a good thing. There are some people who can handle five times. There are some people who can handle only one. There are some people with great intellectual capabilities, and some who have very little. There are some who have great musical talents, and some who do not. There are some who have the ability to project and articulate their thoughts, and there are some who cannot. There are some with physical prowess and attractive looks, and there are some who have not. You might say, Lord, this is not fair. But I stop by here to tell you, God's kingdom purposes do not operate according to what is fair, but according to what is just and what is best. The scripture says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Apostle Paul speaks to talents in Romans 12, 6, 8. He writes, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministry. The teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. God has given each and every one of us some gifts, some more than others. But we must thank God for that gift. For the God is the one who gives the gifts. We cannot gift ourselves. So we must be thankful for the gifts that we have and we must use them. But the gifts we receive ought to be developed. The gift of the potential and our development of this potential brings about the fulfillment of that gift. We are gifted and entrusted. The important thing to remember is that each servant was given something. Nobody was left idle. You might not be a five talent, talent person, but you definitely have one. We gotta stop making excuses by saying we cannot answer God's call on our lives. We must use the gift that God has given us to build up our communities, to build up our church. We must stop blaming God or evil or evil circumstances for the fact that we did not use our God 
We all have the ability. We all have that. Instead of bearing our gifts, we need to invest in the kingdom service. There's no getting around the fact that we are responsible for what we have been given. Preach. God expects everyone to make proper use of their gifts. There are no excuses. The man with one talent buried his out of fear. And because of his fear, there is judgment. Those who act in faith receive more faith. Those who act in fear are punished. The slave is wicked. He's wicked for not having faith. He's wicked for being a lazy bum. He's wicked for not even trying. What are you doing because of fear? What are you leaving unattended because of fear? Are you bearing any relationships and hope at least that they won't get any worse? Are you bearing your gifts and abilities from fear of failure? Are you bearing joy and adventure and settling for the status quo? What is in your life that you have been given, but yet you just sit around moping, waiting for a better time? Waiting for the master to return so you can go to the hole and dig up what God gave you. <laughs> Many people that fear keep them from achieving. They fear everything. They fear failure. They even fear success. They fear rejection. They remain idle. They believe it's easier for them that way. They fear what others might say about them. They sit their gifts, they bury their gifts, they sit on them, and then they point to the failure of others. They sit on the sidelines and complain, while others are using their gifts to build up the body of Christ. They let fear hold them back. But I do believe that President Roosevelt put it best. It's not the critic who counts. The man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails by daring greatly. So this place shall never be what those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. The judgment of the master falls upon the third servant because he's fearful, he's timid, he's scared to use what God has given him. Fears prevent us from becoming who God has called us to be. Our fears prevent us from moving on with God's plan for our lives. Fear is the enemy of faith. But I'll stop by here to tell you, when you put your faith in God, you can step out on nothing and land on something. Read over and over and over again in the Bible. Do not be afraid. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is with me. What can man do? Do to me. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self discipline. God wants us to be faithful and not fearful. Standing 
still is not faithful. Taking the safe way to avoid all risk is not faithful. Pointing the fingers while others are striving is not faithful. It's important to notice that each servant received talents according to his ability. Your responsibility is, is tied to your ability. See, our potential is God's gift to us. What we do with it is our gift to God. You are the only person on earth who can use your ability. Are you investing in what you have been given? It does not matter how much you've been given. Are you bearing your blessings in the same? We have talent. You have talent. Use it. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who can bless and protect us. Never give up. Never quit. I feel good today. God has given you a unique talent that should be used like your signature. You have talents and gifts. You have been appointed and anointed. You are the pinnacle of creation. You are greater than the moon and the stars. They might not live you, but they are here to serve you. Our home is in heaven. Think of all the blessings that you have been given. <coughs> Pick your head up and smile. God has been generous to all of us. All we have to do is count our blessings. Yes. And I, I bet you, if you start counting, you will keep on counting. Lazy servant who hit his talent on the ground. He did so out of fear. How many people do you know? Five type of people who amount to nothing because they have no faith in God. Use your gifts and your losers. The person who develops his gifts, use them for the glory of God. And God is blessed to be a blessing for others. We must be clear on one thing. God is coming back. And he expects a return. You should tell my sisters and brothers. Share your gifts generously. Pope John the 23rd said, Consult not your fears, but your hopes and dreams. Think not about your frustrations, but about your unfulfilled potential. Concern yourself not with what you tried and failed in, but what is still possible for you. May God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and the Lord's time. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who will see you to my Father and His Son, who will the Father and His Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to his resurrection day and the life of the world's come. Let us lift up our prayers and petitions to God. For the church of God, that she will joyfully proclaim and live the faith of Christ in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all church ministers, that they may serve the people faithfully and with conviction for the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all God's people, may they use their many talents to proclaim the sanctity of life in areas of business, media, arts, and politics. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Continue healing for Miss Minnie Berry, Miss Ruthie Hawkins, and Miss Florence Perkins. We pray to the Lord. Lord. A special prayer of healing for all of our sick and shedding church and family members. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For mothers and fathers who await the birth of their child, that God may fill their hearts with an ever deepening love. With an ever deepening love each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For the dead and all those who mourn, may they be comforted by the promise of new life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Please add your own personal attention. Church, let us pray for those who requested our prayers via the internet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord First, let us pray that God will give medical science the knowledge to cure the Ebola virus. We pray to the Lord. Church, I ask you to pray for a special attention that God's will be done. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have your mercy. In the soul of Milton Henderson, who 40 years ago today left the home of God after tragic accident, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have your mercy. Almighty God, through the prayers of the family gathered here before you today, Continue to lead, guide, bless, and protect us. We ask this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, our Lord, our love for us is in our living. May the tithes and offerings we bring to the altar be an outpouring of our joy and thanksgiving to what God freely gives. Our preparation song is found in the leading guide, we have number 227. He's so
may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is His name. For I believe in the law of His worship. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may attain to us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of God's great love and peace.
call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life.
Come and join us as we say the Lord's Week every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Join us every Thursday 
after the AA plan for adoration of the Memorial bricks can be purchased at, at any time. Contact Thomas Calicut and Michael Moore. The cost is $100. The Holy Angels HIV AIDS Ministry is sponsoring a fundraising event to the Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on Saturday, November 29th, 2014. The cost of the trip is $45. There is a $10 refund towards lunch and a $10 and $10 and $10 towards gambling. The bus will leave from Holy Angels at 745 a.m. Every turn and return at 5.15 p.m. To purchase tickets, please see Gloria D. or any member of the HIV AIDS Ministry. Lady volunteers are hosting a bake sale today following both masses. Bring your sweet tea. It's that time again, breakfast with Sandy. The date is Sunday, December 21st. The Men's Coalition is asking for a gift for our children. There is a box in the back of the church. Once all the gifts are collected, the wrapping day is Sunday, December 14th, starting after the 8 a.m. mass. Please read the bulletin and insert for more detailed information. Actually, you already said it again, but my name is Jackson. I'm the Lincoln Center here the chapter for the Angels Coalition and chairperson for the breakfast with Sam. So again, for those of you that are not familiar with breakfast with Sam, every year we donate gifts to worthy children that are in need. Uh, sometimes over 300 children will come up in order to get gifts. So if you have a grandchild or a child that you know that needs a gift, please join us on the 21st of December, right after 1130 Mass, and we will be passing out gifts at that time. Right now, Sam needs your help. He needs your gifts, he needs your money, or he needs your gift card. Okay, either one, and we accept them all in order to be able to help us. Now, there's a basket back in the back there, uh, on, the, uh, on the back wall. You can put your gifts right in there. Uh, if it's money or a card, please give it to one of the Holy Angels Men's Coalition. Can you stand up, please, so people can see who you are? Real quick, just comments. Okay, these are men's, men's Coalition, so any one of them you can give the money to or the gift card to. And we will make sure that it does not to for the child. Again, this is on the 21st of December. The wrapping party is going to be on the 14th, the week before. That's going to be downstairs in the Paul Hall's, Paul B. Smith Hall basement. So we are looking for volunteers that are willing to help us to be able to wrap these gifts. So anyone that's interested, please let us know ahead of time. Thank you very much. God bless you. Pray for the 
your soul, we ask that healing hand be put upon you. Lift them up and guide them in your ways. We pray for his peace of mind, soul, and body. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, that was a great surprise. He's an on-time guy. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass is in to let us go forth and to remain on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. Our closing song is hymn number one. The King Shall Come. Sunday Mass Closing Prayer. Thank you for worshiping with us. Be sure to join us again next Sunday. Until then, log on to our website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com for Father Drew's weekly message and God's Praises Tell, which features an interview of Father Drew by Andrew Light, Director of the Office of Black Catholics, Archdiocese of Chicago, on the Holy Angels Church website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com forward slash node forward slash 95. Also read Deacon Bruce McElrath's weekly blog, An Explanation of the Holy Angels Church Mural, which you are currently viewing, can be found on the Holy Angels Church website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com forward slash no forward slash five. Until we meet again, may all that you do give glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen.